the opposition view. But there's no fill this week. Instead, I'm filling in. And we have a great opposition view today. We're joined by Jack Ward from the Jack Ward Football Podcast. He's going to be talking all things Oxford. And keep in mind, because of the hectic build-up of football around this time, this is actually being recorded before Luton Town play Plymouth and before Oxford play Burnley on Saturday. But we'll get Jack's thoughts about Oxford season so far, as well as who are the danger men and my opinion on how things are going at the moment without having seen the Luton Plymouth game. Essentially, I know that for the Oxford game, we're going to be in for a real battle. We will. But enough of me. Let's get the thoughts of Jack Ward. Here he is. And as promised, here's Jack. Jack, thank you very much for joining us today. Really appreciate it, mate. Uh, yeah, really, really do. I, I, again, I'm making my debut, I think, on a championship podcast, um, <laughs> talking to uh, talking to another supporter. So, yeah, it's um, it's it should be really, really interesting. I'm, I'm hoping to have some really, really good chats. Um, it's going to be a, a really fascinating game, I think. I'm, we've never, uh, I haven't played, I haven't seen Luton, um, or I haven't seen Luton play yet this season. Um, I haven't been to Luton yet in my lifetime. I'm really looking forward to going. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of new things coming up in the next couple of weeks will be cool. Yeah, well, you're going to love Kenilworth Road because it's, in my opinion, Kassam and Kenilworth Road are like what football's meant to be like. It's, yeah. it's amazing and it's being lost from the game. Yeah, I mean, they are both, I'll be honest with you, I think yours is is better, which I think says a lot about ours. Um, ours is absolutely abysmal. You know, we we, we, uh, we haven't got a stand in the championship and we're missing a stand. I think that says everything about this current situation. And, you know, again, without making it all about Oxford United and, the, and the, the, the boring stuff, hopefully that won't be for too much longer. And uh, we can hopefully stay in the championship with a stadium that looks like it should be in the championship. That seems to be the aim, but no, I am looking forward to going. It's, it's a very, very historical stadium. And, you know, it, you know, it, it hosted a, a dream last season in the Premier League, I imagine. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good to to go in, in a sold out away end on a on a cold, windy, probably rainy Tuesday night. At least you got a roof over your head, at, yeah. You know, in the Oak Road end, so it's not so bad. The safe standing is going to be very good. Um, but look, with with three sided stadiums as well, it's not the end of the world because remember, Kenilworth Road only had three sides. We had like beach huts along one end. Nothing yeah. wrong with a, a three-sided stadium. No, there's not. Which, which league were you? I mean, we've been we've had that in in the national league. We've had that in in League Two, League One, and now the Championship. So I suppose you're you're similar. You you had you you rose you know up the leagues with a with a stadium that didn't look like it should be in those in those divisions. So yeah, we're we're in, we're in a similar boat. Sure. Um, it's just that thing of you know we we want to try and get as many supporters watching us in the best possible competition and obviously when you're missing a stand and you, you haven't got that ability to do it there was talk of a temporary stand there was talk of of putting something up to ultimately make it a, a better atmosphere and allow more people um, to come and watch Oxford United in a division that they just haven't been in for 25 years um, that isn't the case so yeah hopefully we can move out but the main thing is staying in the championship so we're playing in a competition where we can give those um, give a younger generation and all the generations an opportunity to watch their local football club at a really really good level and you know there's, there's some I'm, I'm, you're, I'm sure you're the same. There's some unbelievable teams still in this in this competition, and it's still sometimes an opportunity. Yours, I think, in the Premier League will probably be more of the case for you. But you pinch yourself and you go, Oxford are playing Leeds. You know, Oxford United are, are, are playing. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, you know, you're sat there and you're saying we're, we're playing. You know, on the opening day we're playing Norwich. We've got Burnley on Saturday. You know, these are these are sort of the teams that you sort of go, yeah, that we we feel as if we we shouldn't be playing these teams. Um, but of course we should be because we, we've, we've earned the right to, to get to this point. It's not even that long ago that Luton versus Oxford was happening in the conference. Um, and, yeah. you know, we, we, we played you and Oxford were gunning for promotion and we beat you 2-1 with Keith Keane scoring directly from a corner. Like that is the real pinch me moment. Yeah, I think it's just yeah, it's the journey, right? I think it's the journey and, and how you how you get to that point. And for so long in in my life, I haven't I haven't had I haven't seen us play at this level. You know, I've I've been very very lucky that I've seen some some good times. And a lot of my memories come in in League Two, and then 
you know, the League One the seasons that we were a part of for quite a long time. Um, so I haven't had that opportunity to sort of see the full journey. But you know, again, I'm an Oxford fan because of my dad and because of my granddad. And, and they always express how, how difficult those times were that when we were playing in the National League and playing the likes of you down there in, in the in the depths of, of what would have been a very, very tricky time for both of us. But we've, we've both risen. You've risen further and, and quicker. Um, but it's crazy how football works. You know, we, we sort of, you've had your own journey. We've had our journey. Um, and now we're meeting in the championship, you know, after after quite a few years away from each other. Um it's what football's about, right? It's what football's all about. I know, it makes it great. But let's talk about Oxford's aspirations to stay in the championship this season. I we, We've had a lot of discussions on our podcast and on championship chat. And our producer, Matt, he actually named Oxford United as one of his dark horses. And I'm really sorry to say we all laughed at him. But you know what? Oxford are doing the business and shutting us all up. I, I think it's... um. It's so difficult when you pick your dark horses and it's so difficult to to talk about a newly promoted side at the start of the season based on purely what they've done in the transfer window. But also, I don't think, I think we got it. I think Oxford fans were not, obviously now we'll, we'll rub it in your face, but we still can't do that. We're so early on in the season and that's what we're, we're, we're saying to each other. We're still so early on in this season and so much can change. We've done some extremely great stuff at home, but away from home, we look like a side that are lacking that, that now and, and that edge to win and oh, we'll just pick up some really important points away from home. And we know that when, if we do stay up, our home form has to be good, but we're not going to win every game at home. So we, we have to be really, really strong or try and be a little bit more. I think it comes down to, to experience and intelligent you know, away from home because you know we are a lot of us, are, a lot of our players are learning on the job. I speak to my granddad the other day and we went through the starting 11 that played against Bristol City. A lot of those players have either never or have had very, very few appearances in the championship. So our, our expectations, as you say, are right. We wanted to stay in this league. We want to stay in this division at all costs. And at the moment, we're doing that through fantastic home form and not so good away form. But we know that isn't sustainable. We won't win every game at home. Burnley at home on Saturday, for example, is going to be extremely difficult and we will be heavy underdogs in that one. Um, but... We feel as though we're, we're, it's been tight and close in those away games. We feel as though it's been they've been they've been close, edgy matches. I think against Bristol City, there were patches similar to Blackburn. First half was good, second half not so good. Coventry, I mean, that game was just absolutely bonkers, um, and we lost that game in the in the last second, literally the last second of that match with a back pass from Will Vox that will forever haunt us away from home so far this season. So. You're right. I think ultimately, to answer your question, um, in short, the expectation is to stay up. And a lot of people didn't have us to stay up. We felt our business was strong. We felt our home form is good. We feel our coach is one of the top coaches in the division, which might sound crazy as a manager of Oxford United, but we feel as though Des Buckingham is, is a coach that with one of the most crazy CVs in this in this industry, um, he is so intelligent. And to be honest with you, if he does keep Oxford United in this league, he will uh, he will quite rightly deserve a, a heap amount of credit because, like you say, you weren't wrong in thinking that Oxford were going to be huge underdogs heading into the championship campaign. Yeah, mostly when you see a team that comes up from League One, you, you expect them to struggle. And that has not been the case. Like at home, you have gritty, gritty home performances and your away performances. They're not bad. They've no. all been really, really tight. And just a word on Des Buckingham as well. Because people are thinking, oh, is he going to be out of his depth? But you mentioned that he's really intelligent. Would you say that the style of play that you're, you're that, that he's sort of put put on Oxford United, it's a case of being sensible, pragmatic, but not trying to like play it out from the back and just generally piss about with it. I think, yeah, sure. I think there's a lot of out of possession work. I think you, you, when you're in the championship, you have to be, you want to play a good brand of football. And Des Buckingham, when he was at Mumbai, when he was in New Zealand, when he was, um, I mean, he's had, again, his CV is crazy. But when he's all of these clubs and part of the, the City group, you know, look, they have a very, very clear philosophy. Their style is very, very clear. It's, you know, ultimately it's about trying to dominate games of football and be as attractive as you can, um, but also win games of football too. It's not, you know, it's not a play centre. It's, it's a, it's a results-based business and they want to play a good brand of football with results to show for it. However, it totally depends on the team you're working with and the division they find themselves in. And he's, you know, working with Oxford United, a team that haven't got the millions and millions of pounds that other teams in this league have got. And they're working with players, that are, a younger group of players that are looking to develop into being, you know, into being well-rounded, 
experienced championship players and he's having to develop those too. Um, of course, there has been some experience added in that transfer window, but he's trying to, again, develop the likes of Tyler Goodrum, who's been exceptional. Mark Harris, who's had some very, very you know small moments in the championship in his his career before. Now he looks like a, a regular goal scorer at this level. Um, but no, he is really, really intelligent. And we knew he had to be. You know, you, you can't come into this league naive. Um, and I think when he started off at, at Oxford in League One, the sort of first few games, we looked a little bit naive. You know, we looked, we genuinely did look really, really poor. Um, and then there was a real turning point. Ironically, when we got beaten 5 0 by Bolton, that was our turning point. We then looked fan- you know, phenomenal for the rest of the League One season and then beat Bolton in the playoff final. So it was. Again, a, a really, really difficult period at the start of his tenure, but I think he's learnt. Yet, yeah, maybe in, you know he's learnt in the in League One, um, but in the Championship we look like a, a, a especially at home and even away at points. I think away we're struggling to deal with sort of momentum shifts in games, but at home we we feel as though we are we're strong out of possession. We feel we're good on the break in transition. We look like a, a really, really strong outfit. Um, and yeah, you're right. If you're going to have to succeed at this level when you are Oxford United and just been promoted from League One, you need a manager that's going to be you know, as smart um, and as tactically intelligent as physically possible. Yeah, and talking about that playoff final, so you lost Josh Murphy or Jacob Murphy. I can't remember Josh, which one is Josh, Josh, yeah. Yeah, it's Josh Murphy. And he, he was... He was pivotal in that playoff final, but you've lost him. You've made some absolutely sensational silings. Um, it's a Ricky Dembele, Dane Scarlett. I don't think he's quite up to the level, but I guess we'll have to see. Matty Phillips, though, brilliant signing at this level. And and also you have Peter Chioso, former Hatter. In yeah, we, yeah, we we feel our recruitment was strong. You know, we we felt our recruitment was strong. We've got a fantastic head of operations or director of football or whatever the title is. It's a title that's always changing, isn't it? But we've got someone that in charge of the recruitment in Ed Waldron, who is who's top. He's a top top operator, um, and we knew that his job was going to be pivotal in our season success because you cannot go into the championship season with that League One squad that we had, and we wouldn't have done that. You know, we've got owners that are looking for us to stay in this, stay at this level. Um, and then maybe beyond, you know, in, in, the, in the next however many years. But ultimately, it's all about this summer building a squad that can be competitive, not just stay up, but be competitive. Um, and if being competitive is just staying up, that's fine. You've ticked both boxes. But we wanted to be able to play a good brand of football, but also be able to, you know, not be the, the, the laughing stock or the punching bag that a lot of people thought we could be when we got promoted. Um, and actually, I never thought we'd be the punching bag or the laughing stock. I there's a high chance if our recruitment had gone, you know, far worse it would have been a much trickier season it still might be i'm saying all these things and we're only what six seven games into the season um but yeah we're really really happy with the replacement of of josh murphy or the the attempts to replace him in different ways different profiles i'd admit but i think they are they're players that can play in those roles i mean sariki dembele is an absolute joke of a footballer um and i think there's been a lot of question marks over maybe an attitude side of him or or maybe a side to him that isn't as look he'll be happy to do the fancy stuff with the ball and happy to, to sort of run with the ball but he also sometimes can hide that's not what we've seen i mean if that's not what we've seen we've seen somebody who is willing to do the dark arts willing to do the dirty stuff and also willing to get hold of the ball in tight spaces and look like an absolute diamond. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that piece of recruitment was a very, very ambitious one. We spent more money than I think we've ever have done in a transfer window. I don't think he actually broke our transfer. I think he did break our transfer record, um, but it was just short of a million pounds. And for Oxford, that's, that's unheard of um, or unheard of in recent years for sure. So, um, yeah, he looks like a top addition. Losing Josh was was difficult, but... You have to be you have to be as proactive as you can in a, in a reactive situation. You know, we lost a key player um, or someone that was good for six months. I would say that, um, and yeah, we've I think we've done really well in in trying to replace him in the best possible way. Yeah, it's a term that I've sort of nixed from the movie Moneyball. You rebuilt him in the aggregate. So having Dembele, having El Mazzuni, who I saw a lot of at Leeson Orient, and I rate him so highly. But that brings me on really nicely to who are your danger men? For, for me, I'm terrified of Mark Harris. He looks like he will bully any centre back. Yeah, he would. Look, he's had a, he had a difficult he had a difficult afternoon against Bristol City. He should have scored. Um, there was an absolute sitter in there, and we talk about moments in games. You know, him missing that chance. Who, like you say, he's been phenomenal. He's, he's taken every chance he's had. He's been great, um, and it's really frustrating that in, in a moment where he probably should have taken that chance, or definitely should have taken that chance, was put on a plate. The game then did change. He gave away the penalty too. It was a bad afternoon for Mark Harris. To be honest, it'd be one that he tries to forget quite quickly. Um, 
but you're right in the sense that, yeah, he is a handful. He's a real, real handful. He's a hard worker. He's somebody who is also a really good finisher. He didn't show it as much on Saturday, but he's shown it you know, in, in the last couple of weeks and in League One in that running. He's a phenomenal finisher. He's, he's a very, very clinical centre forward. He's somebody that will run for days. He will press. He will hunt. He will you know, intimidate. And not in maybe in any in sort of big physicality type, but he'll run at you. He'll run at you and he won't give up. Um and if we're looking to play this sort of like pressing out of possession workhorse type of football, he is absolutely perfect, right? You know, we're talking about a player there that is going to chase and chase for days. And he will see the, the, you know, and he has seen that the positives that come from that. I mean, against Norwich on the opening day of the season, we saw what he did to um, either Duffy or the other one. I can't remember who the other one was. Um, it was, um, um, oh, Duffy's mate, whoever that yeah, is. Yeah, it was the oh god, we talked about that as well. We absolutely bullied him, had him absolutely. crawling on the ground. Yeah, and that, again, that that comes from it. His name will come to me as soon as I yeah. as soon as I don't need to. As soon as uh, we hit stop record, yeah, it's his, gonna his name will come to me. Up. I think it also begins with a with a hey, uh, Grant Handley, isn't it? That's yeah, right. it's Handley. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And again, that that was an, that's an example of someone who is who is looking to get on a player and make it a nuisance or make him think more. And, you know, that's the thing in the championship. We've learned, and you'd have seen that in the Premier League. Um, and then when you got promoted into the championship, the time you know, time on the ball and time to make decisions is much more is is much different. Um, and sometimes these players, like these championship players, and I imagine in the Premier League as well, they don't think they've got as much time as they have done. Whereas in League One and League Two, it's frantic. It's like right, get get on them, get on them get on them um i think that's what suited us a little bit we've sort of surprised and shocked teams with the intensity we're sort of looking to play at so yeah mark harris will definitely be one we're missing cameron Brannigan, which is an absolute um killer for us you know, he is our best player he is somebody who has been with us for a very very long time and he's a fan favorite through performance and through just general personality and what he provides us you know he leads by example he leads through performance so missing him and we'll, we were missing him for, for about six weeks which is a bit of a shame so yeah, that's a that's annoying. But yeah, Dembele would be one. Harris would be one. Tyler Goodrum, you can always see Tyler Goodrum do something really, really special. Um, yeah, Al Mazzini looks good. I'm going to try not to reel the whole team off. But that, that that sort of that front three and and and, and Al Mazzini at the moment look like a side that to when the when things are, are looking slightly more difficult, they they've got that sort of magic in them to change games. So coming away from home to Luton Town. How do you reckon Oxford are going to approach the game? I think we're going to probably, again, it's difficult to sort of say, I think we're probably going to concede the ball a little bit. I think that's something that we've tried to do um, because we feel then our threat in transition is, is just as deadly. Um, I think it'd be naive for us. I just can't see it. I can't see us go to Luton and try and dominate games of football. That's not because we're going to sort of play dark arts, terrible football. We're not going to sit there and, and park the bus for 90 minutes. That's not Oxford United. That's not Des Buckingham. It might look like that at times if we're winning the game, but you know, who can blame us? We're, we're away to Luton in the championship and we haven't you know, got a single point away from home. However, I would say to that, we've seen that we've gone one nil up in the last couple of games away from home. We, you cannot concede... Um, chances and you can't just sit back and invite pressure because you will well, we've seen so far this season you will concede because teams will sort of, sort of believe and if they get the next one you sort of go this feels inevitable and that that's horrible we've all felt that in football where the goal is inevitable and you're sort of just waiting for it to go in um how do i think we'll approach it i think it'll be similar i think you'll, you'll see a lot of organization or attempt to be as organized as possible out of possession i think there'll be a lot of off the ball running i think there'll be a lot of, of trying to cut passing lanes i think you know your biggest strength and it's sometimes your detriment is obviously getting that ball into the penalty box and being as um I guess direct in the way that you cross it into there with, with the two center forwards you've got and of course the wing batch you're looking to play with you're looking to get that ball in the box as quickly as possible and, and Again, that 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 you know, you might score three headers and win three nil. You might score from five crosses and win five nil. Um, but we know that you know there are ways that we can. Or Des Buckingham believes there'll be ways that we can stop that and, and limit that. And then that forces you then to sort of go out and, and do it in a different way. So yeah, threat and transition on the break. We have to be defensively organised. We have to be aware to what you're looking to try and do. Um, and again, we're looking for our first point away from home. Um, and. Again, we'll have to sort of see if that comes. I mean, it's not nice. I've got a horrible, horrible feeling uh, that Pompey on Saturday will be their first win of the season as well. Um, so, yeah, we're looking to sort of get our first away, uh, looking to get our first away point um, before we get our, our another away defeat. Great. And um, before we go, 
can I trouble you for a score prediction? Because we do a prediction league, which is the opposition podcast against the four co-hosts from the main podcast. We call it the Sluga Six. Okay. It was uh, the, the goalkeeper that we signed when we got promoted to the, the championship and we broke our transfer record for him. He was streaky, but his name sort of rhymes with super. So it's our own take on a prediction league. I, I like don't that. have the rest of the games, but I do know that Phil, who normally does the opposition view, would have given you Luton Town versus Oxford as one of the games. So I'll be in touch with the remaining five and we'll put them up on our socials. But can I trouble you for a score prediction? I'm going to go with an ambitious one and I'm going to say 1-1. Um, <laughs> um, that ambitious? <laughs> which, is, which is extremely ambitious because we have not got a single point this season. Um I don't, I can, I can also, yeah, I think it's difficult because we have got a terrible away record right now. Um, I think you are sort of growing into the season. I could be wrong. I feel like you are sort of growing into it steadily. Um, it was a poor start and there have been some poor results in the, in the last couple of weeks, but that result against Sheffield Wednesday in the last one maybe felt like a, um, I don't know, I'm putting words into a Luton Town fan's mouth, but I, I think that there felt like that there could be, it's amazing what a win can do. That's all I'll say. It's amazing what a win can do and, and, and sort of how perceptions and, and things are changed, um, you know, just by a single point. So, yes, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes of that. Um, I think it's going to be tricky. It always will be tricky. It's on Tuesday. Um, that away record for us, of course, as I've said, plenty of time does concern me. But I'm going to go the, with a 1-1 draw, um, which we would absolutely take. I think we'd snap your hand off for a 1-1 draw. I, I I pay good money to have a one-one draw right now. To be honest, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And Jack, where can everyone find you on socials? Um, on Twitter, it's Jack Ward Football po- uh, Jack Ward Podcast, and on YouTube, where all my content is. If you're looking to sort of get more content like that, Luton are, will be a regular part of that content. We're doing Championship content all season uh, on YouTube. That is the Jack Ward Football Podcast. Um, so yeah, there will be there will be Luton appearances this season, and there, I imagine if the game's good on Tuesday, there'll be there'll be Luton involved with an Oxford game too. So. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Jack, for joining us today. And best of luck to Oxford for the rest of the season. And if you're watching this on our YouTube, which you most likely will be, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for even more Luton Town and Championship content where we have Oxford down as our dark horses. A big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification, and Carry On for keeping us sounding great. And a big thank you to our podcast sponsors, The Record Shop in Amersham. Wherever you are in the country, head down to Amersham if you collect vinyl. They have tons of it. And mention the OK Football Show, you will get a discount. Just be nice about it. Well, that's all ahead of Luton Town versus Oxford. As always, come on you hatters.